Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all well. I'm Leslie O'Connor, and here we have Marcia Hilton and Karen Cruz. Ladies, please introduce yourselves. Marcia. Marcia can go first. Hello, everybody. Have you done? Yeah, everybody knows me now, I think. <laughs> now, there might be guests on here who don't know you. There might be guests you know, they don't know us. So you need to do a nice intro. So I'm Leslie. Let me let me show you how it's done. <laughs> like I know what to do. <laughs> so hi, hello everybody. I'm Leslie O'Connor and I am here with the Real Table Talk. And we are here this evening, five o'clock to entertain you for the next hour. Well, 45 minutes to an hour. Also on the show today, Karen or myself or Marcia, one of us, we will be looking at your comments. So please leave us a comment. You know, tell us where you're joining from. Say hello. Just give us, tell us something interesting about you or what you'd like us to discuss. And also there's one other thing actually I'm napping on, one other thing. We said, me, Marcia and Karen, we came on here was, I think it was about six weeks ago. It might have been a little bit longer. And when we was first getting the show started and we was asking you for names and we came up with the real table talk. So I hope you all like the name. Drop a comment, let us all know. Over to you, Marcia. So, hi everyone, I am Marcia and I'm part of the Real Table Talk crew, along with Leslie and Karen. Hi, Marcia. <clears throat> Froggy my throat. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Cruz. I am the quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> you notice know, everybody's laughing there, don't you? Because you know that's not true. You know that's not true. And I know you can all see that we have a special guest here with us today. And Karen is going to introduce our special guest today. Okay, so today's special guest is Mrs. Zena Gooding Broderick. <laughs> Hi, Zena. So this is Zena. Zena is an amazing woman. Hi. I'm not even going to read this, I'm just going to ad lib, I'm just going to say it as it comes. Um, amazing woman. How many businesses has Zena got? Two businesses, three businesses, and two businesses. Um, one family business that most of us know of, and if you don't, you will by the end of this, oh. uh, this Zoom, this Facebook Live. And Zena is a executive business coach, public speaker, mum, wife, sister, daughter, all those kind of things. She, what else do you do, Zena? Mother of Abundance. I'm also, yeah, pa Mother of Abundance. It, that's, uh, that's where I am an executive coach for Ambitious Mums. And I'm also a non-executive director of two different charities, which I chair. Exactly. I knew that. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I just wanted to know if she knew what she did. So, <laughs> basically... An absolutely awesome woman. At some stage, I will tell you how Zena and I met. I can do that whenever you fancy it, Leslie. Um, but it's a really personal, moving story. Is that okay? Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. And welcome. Welcome, Thank Zena. It's so lovely to have you here. I don't know you personally, like Karen and Marcia, but my connection with your family was through your dad okay yeah so your dad was a real blessings to me and my family when we suddenly lost my brother who and your dad was amazing amazing man you know and i've, I've never gone into the funeral parlor before but you know when when we was there yeah 
Oh, Massey's gone. Where's she gone? She'll come back. She'll come back. When we, when your, you know, your your dad was around, and yeah, he he was just amazing, and and did so much beautiful work, and so many. It wasn't even. I don't even think it was work for him because I think that that was just him. You know, this beautiful soul, this beautiful heart, and he just wanted to help us through that process, and he, he did. You know, and I know my mum, my auntie, they spent a lot of time with your dad. So I, I just want to say that, a, a beautiful dad, a, absolutely beautiful. And I know your dad, you know, passed away. And I, I was like, whoa! And it was just a year after my brother, because I think, it was it the first week in August? Um, It was the 29th of July that he died, oh. and then he's was on the 10th of August right, okay because my brother passed away the 31st of August so I knew it was very close to to my brother and I was like yeah yeah because we were going to celebrate his first anniversary and then we got the news yeah about your dad so yeah a beautiful dad <clears throat> a lovely dad so how 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 are you able to step into you know this job how does that feel because your dad is amazing so how how does it feel you know stepping into this fantastic role gosh do you know what that's a really really good question um i think at the time when my dad died it was mainly i was being a dutiful daughter and when when my dad got ill, because you know it was it was a very sudden illness. We knew he was ill, and then I think seven and a half weeks later he died. So it was really really quick. Um, what I call a slow sudden death, where you get the news and you're able to wrap up things, but it's still not very you know it's it's very quick yeah. um and I just wanted to do the best for my dad I, I wanted him to I wanted to see if I could cure him I was you know went into carer overdrive and was trying to do everything to save his life and when it became evident that I wouldn't be able to do that and he he really cared about the legacy of his business that was it seemed like that was the paramount that the paramount most important thing for him and to him it, it was just like, well, we've got we've got to do this for daddy and for the community. We can't we can't let the business go. We can't let the business die with my along with my dad. And I think with us doing the business, we've been able to keep his legacy Absolutely. alive in the way we deliver the service. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah, it's it's so nice and refreshing to have that business within the community. You know, so that's that's really nice. And your dad, you know, it, like I said, I only met him on that occasion and I didn't know him before, but the memories of what I've got from your dad, amazing man, absolutely amazing. Yeah, really is. But And you're doing fantastic work. So what happens now then with the business? How do you, how do you manage running the business and all your other things? Okay, so um, I'm really pleased you asked that question. A lot of people say to me, how do you do everything? How do you do everything? Well, hopefully, I, I'm really very honest. And I say, I don't. I don't try to do everything all at the same time. And sometimes it takes me longer to do things than I might intend. So a good example is um, Marcia and Karen knew that today I'd intended to cut my hair. That hasn't happened. I was supposed to wash my hair, lined it up and cut it. That didn't happen. And you know what? It's all good. I will show up here and people will compliment my hair, but not know that there was something missing <laughs> in what was supposed to have happened today. And that actually tends to be how it goes. I'll plan things and I'm really compassionate with myself. I do not expect to do it all, all the time. But in the main, I do a good job and I get really good feedback, which is helpful. Mm -hmm. But I am not in the market for overwhelm. I am not in the market for burnout. I do not recommend that to anybody. Mm -hmm. It's all about joy and living, you know, the best possible life. So when it comes to the funeral parlour, I'm really fortunate in that I am not the only person 
<clears throat> responsible for running it. So I'm one of three equal owners. The other two being my husband, Peter, and my sister, Gay. They are outstanding business partners. They are really, really supportive of me. When they knew that I wanted to become a coach, they were really supportive and we're kind of supportive of each other. We ask one another, what do you really want to do? Is there anything that, you know, we, we can help each other so that you can support you through? Is there any training you want to do? Um, we really encourage each other forward, but we're still very much all engaged in the, the business and we meet, we still have management uh, meetings all the time. I schedule in my meetings for the two charities that I chair and the other two directors of Gooding Funeral Services. I put that into the management diary so they know when I've got things to do, like if I'm, if I'm coaching or if I've got um, a course that I'm doing, I'm doing a master's at the moment. Um, I'll block out study time and things like that. And my business partners are outstanding and really supportive, but we've all got the same view yeah. of excellence in business and excellence in service. So we kind of come together um, in difficult times, like with the, the pandemic that's happened and how we manage um, our business in difficulty and good times. We always, always come together and we're good at communicating so that's basically how I manage everything. I <clears throat> don't try and overdo it. I have no intentions of burning myself out. I take on things that I really enjoy and that's the way it's gonna be for the foreseeable future. I live my life to the full and encourage other people to do the same. It's, yeah, it's interesting that you've both talked about the quality of service at, um, at uh, Zena and the family, the family business. So that's how I met Zena, similar to you, Leslie. It was when my mom passed. Um, about six years ago. I didn't even know Zena existed. I'm sorry, Zena, but I just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'd heard about the Brodericks because Michael's good friends with Ansel, so I, I knew about the Brodericks. Um, so when <clears throat> mom passed, um, it was my sister initially that looked after everything. We didn't even have a conversation. We just said, so what's happening with mom? Oh, you know, we're just going to um, uh, uh, Goodison Funeral Service. So I went, all right, okay. And the minute we walked in, this is true. The minute we walked in, there was just a beautiful feeling of calm and yeah. the service that we got from Zena and Peter and all the other staff actually was just beautiful and professional. Yeah. And it was kind of our people. So that made such a big difference because normally you hear about Tempest and all the other ones that people just automatically go to. So to walk into a funeral parlor where there were just people that looked like us that were from the community um, made a massive difference and when Zena referred to our mum as a guest that was when I thought this oh. is special this is special yeah 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 I loved it so thank you Zena and then uh, we've just kept in contact since then so that's been six years I've not been able to shake her off <laughs> I, have to say, I remember the first time I met Karen and even in such difficult circumstances as losing her beloved mother she was just she's just like sunshine walking into the into the parlor honest to god and I will never ever forget it I remember it clear as day you came in with your sister and your two nieces and what could have been a really solemn and somber um, experience there was just laughter there was just wow real laughter and you know not in a sinister real spooky yeah. way but just you know that could have been really really difficult but Karen was just joking about putting a put saying to her niece if you just hop into that coffin you, cough you can check it out see if it's good and then you know you'll be tapping saying let me out let me out <laughs> it was nerves man it was nerves come on Zena man <laughs> Tell me what you want. I was I was really trying to resist being in stitches. It was so funny. And, and after that, Karen would come in and every single time was exactly the same. A breath of fresh air, just sunshine coming in. And she used to sell um, my Arbon and this is my favourite lip gloss. And Karen, thank you, sweet darling. Thank well. you. And she come in and she go, I love my job. I love this. I really, and I'd be like, 
she's not joking. She really, really loves what she's doing. And it's like, gosh, yeah, that's that's possible, isn't it? That's 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 a reality. You can really, really enjoy what you're doing. And every single time she came in, it was like it was almost tangible. You could touch her joy. So beautiful and it's never changed. It's always, even with Flourished Minds and her LinkedIn posts and her Facebook posts, just uplifting, even when she's vexed. <laughs> the rare occasion where she sees something or she hears something that she's not happy, happy about because she's so protective of our young people. And I've seen her really defending and saying, this is not acceptable. And everyone will come together and say, you're right, Karen, you're absolutely right. But it's that passion and real commitment that's what we need and, purpose and yeah. mission oh my gosh refreshing and, and just wonderful wonderful I so, so that cost me about <laughs> pounds i'll just let everybody know <laughs> <laughs> so more about you zena so um one of the things i want to ask you about uh the work that you do in the field do you ever get scared when you're in there Oh my goodness, I had to tell you about this one time. Right? Oh. <laughs> I think I was on the phone to, uh, my, I think, was it, was, was that on the phone to Gay? My sister and I share a virtual office. So for years now, we've worked like this. So we'll be on Zoom. Um, I'll minimize the screen. So there's a tiny, like, TV version of Gay at the top, and we'll just be cracking on with our work. And this, this particular time, I think um, everybody, the team had gone out for um, a funeral. So I was in the parlor on my own. Yeah. And I was talking to, talking to Gay and um, then getting on with my work. So it was quiet. Then I heard footsteps coming from the mortuary down towards my desk and I literally froze. And I my eyes must have popped right out my head. It was like, <gasps> Like that. And then my embalmer walked around the corner. I was like, I, I didn't know you were here. And he was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I didn't know you were here. Oh my God. And I, I literally had to hug him. I was shaking. Oh God. Oh, I was like, oh my God, it's you. I didn't know you were here. It's like, wow. yeah. And he goes, he goes, I'm clearly not that important, am I? You couldn't even remember I was even here in the building. I was like, honest to God, I'm so grateful you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I really am. Oh, but aside from that, aside from that, no, never. I have had to stay overnight at the parlor. Um, and I, I have to tell you, that was not by design. Yeah. I'm, you know, in small businesses, you guys probably know this, you can be chief cook and bottle washer. And unfortunately for me, I'm the one who's most clued up about IT. It doesn't mean I'm the most, I'm the most specialised, uh, but I just happen to be the most clued up. So if we get new printers and computers, it's me who has to network them. I have to figure out the Wi-Fi. I have to do all of that kind of stuff and get the extensions in and log them in and all that kind of stuff. So on this particular occasion, we bought um, th two, two new printers and two computers or something like that. And they were, they were Microsoft. I'm sorry, but man, I am not a huge fan of them because it took so long to set them up. There was download after download after download that they had to do. And it's like, my goodness, this thing is brand new. You'd expect Love that the that. software it was just it's just ridiculous leslie honest to goodness but yeah i ended up staying the whole night till about seven o'clock in the morning um and i wasn't i wasn't afraid what what i would say is that i i have i've been in situations where i get a really good vibe from people who have passed away I wouldn't say that I'm not a medium or anything like that. I've not seen any ghosts, nothing like that. I do believe that by the time they come to us, their spirit is already departed. Yeah. Yeah. There have been a couple of um, occasions where someone has come into our care and they just still seem very sad. 
they seem really sad I think one person it wasn't it wasn't even a suicide they just they were quite young they must have been in them early to mid 40s or something like that and they just seemed really sad the two people who I can think of that just seemed like royalty even though they had died two women two separate women one of them turned out to be um, a Nigerian princess we didn't know that until the until the eulogy and I, I I will say hands down my favorite 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 part of a funeral that we take care of is the eulogy is hearing all about the person that has been in our care and we probably don't know anything yeah. or not very much about them so the eulogy to us is or certainly to me is really important and when we heard that this this one particular lady was the equivalent of um, a princess in the district in, in the district that she was born and raised, we were not surprised. She just seemed mm -mm. she even even after she died, she just seemed so regal. Mm -hmm. It's hard to hard to explain, but I've never felt fear there except for that time when 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 yeah. the the embalmer scared the life out of me. Pardon the pun. <laughs> yeah. you know what? I knew you were there that night by yourself. Oh, I'd have played some tricks. I knew no. you were. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have played some tricks. Oh. <laughs> um, do, do you enjoy it? Do you in, enjoy doing um, working at the funeral parlour? Um, yes, I would say that it's one of the most emotionally rewarding roles I have ever done, ever when somebody thanks me they're literally that they're, they're thanking me to their marrow it's not like oh thanks i yeah. see you later it's it's a really really deep and profound and moving um thankfulness and gratitude on a level that i i i've never experienced in my career in anything else that i've done and i've done a few things i've done a fair few things but coming from a corporate background, you know, running, um, assisting in running programs and projects and in, in structural engineering and stuff, you don't come by <laughs> reasons for people to be quite as grateful as they are in the funeral profession. So, um, yeah, I, you do enjoyment. You do? Oh, sorry. I mean, what was that? I'm going to say, how do you, do you deal with, how do you detach away from the emotions of that person? and still do your job and still give a good service? So the majority of the time um, I can. Um, I think probably not long after my dad had died, it was more difficult because I was bereft myself. I was, I was deep in grief when daddy had died and I was really concerned that I'd be doing a funeral arrangement and I would inappropriately burst into tears because of my loss and my grief. And I had to get counselling because even around my dad's funeral was the first funeral that I directed. And even then and on the day I didn't cry and myself and my family were quite concerned as to when she's going to cry and when is she going to have her time to reflect and ex feel the grief, you know, feel the, the power of the grief because it can be over overwhelming and overpowering. Um, so yeah, I think it was more difficult. I would try and compartmentalize, still have compassion for the person that I was, was dealing with. And it was something that daddy had said to me it was a proper Jedi mind trick because he, before he died and before he was even ill, he used to say to me, do you like working here, Sandra? So he'd call me my home name, Sandra. Do you like working here, Sandra? Do you like, um, do you like this? I'd be like, yeah, it's, it's okay. Do you want to be a funeral director? He'd go and be like, oh no, daddy. I couldn't do that. I'd be crying. They'd be crying. We'd all be crying. I'd be useless. And he said to me, no, you wouldn't, Pet, because you'd put the family first. And that never left me. Never, ever left me. There was a time, though, where a friend of mine um, came in and her mother had died. And, and I got to know her because her mother had died, similar, similar to uh, me and Karen. Um, and she said, I, I want to read this poem to you. It's what I want to put into the order of service. Would you mind reading it out for me? 
and we were sitting in the foyer and we were just reading and I read it and I I cried and I said I am so sorry but this poem's really beautiful <laughs> it's so beautiful it's so moving and it was okay it was all right we have a, a funeral director mentor um uh, a man that we really respect he he taught us our diplomas our funeral directing diplomas and we call on him from time to time and in part of our training we talk about how do we manage with the emotional side of what we do and he said sometimes sometimes it is appropriate to cry he I think he'd done the funeral he'd gone to collect a colleague from he, a colleague had died he had to go and collect that colleague from their home and he was met by the family and he cried and he said I felt it was perfectly natural for me to have cried and so did his family because mm -hmm. um because we were on that level and we could and I know that that particular client didn't say well I expected you to hold it together you're supposed to be my funeral director we we kind of we kind of smiled and she we agreed that her poem really hit the spot <laughs> yeah. like you you've hit you really nailed it with this poem you really have yeah. so sometimes yeah. it's okay and we just kind of take it take it as it goes we've got a really good support system as well working with my husband who's also in that we've, we've dealt with um, family members our own family members have died daddy as well you know and um we just do what daddy says and put the family first even if it's our own family just put them first yeah. Yeah. i think walking in and seeing big giant peter with a huge smile on his face and you get a nice warm i don't get handshakes i get a big peter hug me we should. <laughs> so, you should, so you should peter was genetically modified especially to give perfect hugs yes. and i say oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that Peter, the, the old women, them love him. He oh, gives them the hugs and cuddles. I don't know. Leslie, your mum's probably one of his girlfriends. He's got a little following. <laughs> yes, right. I'm not lying, am I? I'm not lying. <laughs> they love him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a lovely guy. He's a lovely guy. So, yeah, of course, we've got to love him. And that's so <laughs> You've got the funeral parlor and then your charity so what do you what do you do with your charities then what work do you do there so there are two charities that i chair one of them is leeds bereavement forum and the other one is mill hill chapel which is a unitarian chapel hidden in plain sight in the middle of leeds city center when i tell people about it sometimes i say is that church actually still open it's like yes it's 300 years and going strong it's still still open it's on city it's on city square big old looking church just set back yeah. off city square um leeds bereavement forum is like a directory of help and support when people lose someone they can go to leeds bereavement forum website and there's also a printed directory where they can say, for example, they lose somebody to cancer, in there it'll be like Macmillan Cancer Support would be there. If, if it's a young widow, it'd be young widow support would be in the directory. Um, there are some support systems like um, Castle, which um, Marcy's mother is part of caring and sharing your loss, um, which is a local one in, in Lead 7, which helps and supports people who were bereft calm and centered places like that go into the directory so it's a sign posting mm -hmm. charity really um so yeah i chair their i <laughs> i i chair their meetings i help with the forward um direction of those charities um and at the moment where both of the charities are moving into becoming a charitable incorporated organization so just helping managing them through that process, really. Fantastic. That's oh. amazing. So you're not busy then? Wow. <laughs> so I just wanted to ask, you through the COVID-19, what's happened through then with funerals? Because my uncle sadly passed away and he lives in South London. And we had the funeral by Zoom, which yeah. was heartbreaking. So how, how has it been for, you know, people? How have you been preparing funerals? 
Well, firstly, I'm sorry to hear that you'd lost your uncle, Leslie. I didn't know that you'd, you'd suffered a, a bereavement during lockdown. It's hard losing somebody at any time, but mm -hmm. COVID has really added an entirely different level of complexity to people's Absolutely. grief Absolutely. because they're Absolutely. not able to come together and support one another in the way that communities tend to do traditionally or just by way of not being able to do much else other than hug someone now that's exactly. you know that's that's almost like mission impossible so the funerals have continued the numbers are restricted so only I think a maximum of 30 people are allowed at the gravesides and uh, I think a maximum of people in the churches and some crematoria too we've we've been I don't think fortunate is the correct term. I just, we, we have been in a situation where families have been abiding by those rules, mm -hmm. where for some that's like impossible. It's, it, it's, it almost feels like doing their loved one a disservice yeah. if they don't come en masse. <clears throat> but uh, the families have been respecting those difficult rules. Yeah. And, um, and finding different ways to support one another. Um, Gooding Funeral Services is part of Dying Matters Leads Partnership and we were talking about how do we give people hope yes. in these circumstances. And for us, it's really about planning memorial services mm -hmm. when people can come together and, not, and, and making this be, we'll make this do for now. Because we know about making do, you know, as a people, mm -hmm. we know about making do. But for us, it's got to be understood that this is making do for now, yeah. not making do forever. But this, so this is something we will come back to and memorial services, I believe, will be happening when the, pan the pandemic is under Absolutely. more reasonable control, if possible. I think people will come together and there will be large celebrations of life Absolutely. when it's legal and when we can do it. I, I just think that's our way. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um and if it's like that, it's only like the, it can only be like this temporarily. We'll have to find a way of doing it safely. So we're not because we do a lot of things in intergenerationally, yeah. So our our seniors are really important to us. <clears throat> we want we wouldn't want to put them at risk from getting COVID-19 anyway. So we want to make sure that when we do all come together, it's safe, yeah. but we do come together somehow. Yeah. So yeah. it's just a message of hope, really. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, that's what we were, you know, because we couldn't get down there. It's the it's my mum's brother, and you know, it's the first a first family member to pass away in this climate, and nobody could come over from America. My mum, and so yeah, it was heartbreaking for the for the family. But yeah, I mean, I think my auntie was saying, you know, next year you know, his memorial, you know, will come up together and have a big celebration. So, yeah, and we're looking forward to that because, um, because yeah, like you said, it's it's like we're not paying our respects by not being there, you know, and it's just to watch it, sat on this, sat here watching it on the screen, it's like, what? Yeah, yeah it was it's really weird, but... I think, I think the way we're doing things at the moment is culturally it's counterintuitive mm -hmm. um but yeah I think I think with our resilient nature we know that we'll, we're going to have to to do something to reclaim that moment somehow mm -hmm. and to reclaim that celebration and that opportunity we will have to yeah, yeah we'll be able to do that yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Wow, thank you for that. Karen, have we got any comments? I've got loads of oh, them. Oh, oh. uh, you've opened a can of worms here, love. <laughs> I was ask you, Zina, um, do you help people to prepare for death, uh, you know, financially at all? Yes, yes, we do. Um, and that's a big part of what we do. <clears throat> And it's something that I speak about quite publicly okay. because um, even though my dad was a funeral director, when he was terminally ill, suddenly terminally ill, because I was daddy's main carer, I was tasked with finding out what he wanted. And it was, 
I mean, to say it was awkward is a complete understatement to have to speak to somebody who's been cut down, you know, suddenly and having to talk about, well, I know you don't want to die, but what do you want to have done at your funeral? You know, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we talk quite openly about how, the importance of preparation. We try and make it um, an easier conversation because it doesn't need to be morose it doesn't need to be a scary conversation it doesn't it certainly doesn't need to be depressing but then people will be like well how do you do that how on earth do you have that kind of conversation about someone dying and it not be depressing it's a depressing topic well you start with yourself you you talk about what your requirements and your wishes would be you don't sort of like turn up to the oldest member of the family and say what are you gonna do with that necklace when you pop your clocks grandma you know you... <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm like oh, I'm not ready to die yet <laughs> you don't you don't you talk to it like that you sort of say these are my wishes this is what I want to have done and I, I'll say to, to anyone who will listen I know I want to be cremated um, yeah. and, Right, I know that I want to have my ashes scattered over the Caribbean Sea. Oh my God! You called a miserable oh, year, yeah. right? Then I know that for each of my sons, I want a diamond to be created from my ashes. Wow! And I also know that I want to set aside sufficient from my um from my life insurance that they can all go together to the Caribbean to scatter my ashes that's what I want but that's how you start you start with talking about what you might want now with those open conversations I was able to find out that Peter wanted to have a woodland burial my Peter a woodland woodland burial I would never Mm -hmm. I said where did that come from a woodland burial it's like yeah I want a woodland burial and I want like my closest members of my family to, to be at my graveside everybody else can stay where the place and he said I'm not really fussed where the service happens mm-hmm. um but I want a woodland burial and I want my close members of the family to be there and I'm like well you better write a list then because you've got 300 million gazillion members of family I'm, <laughs> I'm, how am I supposed to know who, who that's supposed to be but you know it's it, then it's not it's not scary yeah it's not morbid yeah it's just a conversation. We, we highly recommend that these conversations happen. And my sons think, and um, Peter's like, I don't want a diamond out of your ashes. That's well gross. And it's like, who said you were going to get one? And, and Malachi's like, I'll have the diamond. I'll have a diamond. <laughs> I'm like, yes, darling. Yeah. You take that diamond and you set it in your wife's engagement ring. And I'll keep an eye on her for you. I'll be watching her every move. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we talk i talk about you know having these open conversations yeah. we talk about funeral planning yeah. where people are able to set aside money so that they have that peace of mind you know the financial peace of mind and the planning peace of mind what's the favorite hymn what do they want to wear when they've passed away where do they want to be buried? Lots of people are still saying Hair Hills. Hair Hills is close to new burials, you know? So it's all of these conversations. Oh, well, I might want to go in with such and such. Well, no one's going in with my dad, for an exam- for example, because he said, I don't want to go in with anybody. I want, a, I want a brand new grave for one. We always, always provide brand new graves for two as standard because they cost exactly the same wow. as a brand new grave for one. So yeah. all you would have to do instead is have a reopen fee instead of getting two separate graves that cost twice the amount. It's a huge cost savings for our families. And dad is like, no, I want a, I want a grave for one. I don't want anyone coming in with me. And I'm like, oh, so why did you get a grave for four when your parents died again? What's that all about? Do you know, it's just... <laughs> yeah. You said you wanted, you, you wanted to be buried with them, so... Well, how's it now that you're not getting buried with them? You want to be on your own? It's like, yeah, I want to be on my own. I want to be in a tomb. A tomb? Man, this is getting this is getting harder and harder to plan. How do we get a tomb in Hair Hills? You know? But um, these conversations can, can genuinely be interesting. This is yeah. an extra aspect of your loved one's personality that you get to discover. 
Yeah. It's almost yeah. like a fact finding thing. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot to someone's to be said about someone's personality mm-hmm. when they start talking about how they want to be celebrated when their time comes. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. There's a there's a question here from um, Ebony Miles- Milestone. You might have answered it, but it's, um, she's asking about uh, the importance of pre planning funerals, and I think you've covered a lot of that without even knowing. You're clever, you are, Zina. You don't even know what's going <laughs> on already. Um, but I don't know if there's anything else. So getting to know what people want. So I feel like I've said to Olivia and Michael. You know when you have your um, the the book thing done with your picture on, yeah, the order of service booklet. Order of service. Yeah. I have got a yeah. crazy photo I want at the front of mine, as you would imagine. <laughs> I've got a Mexican hat on, and that picture <laughs> I want on mine. So Zena, now you know, right? Oh, I know. I'm going to send you the picture. <laughs> I'm going to use it. I let my great 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 grandchildren know, so when it's time for you, they'll know what to do. Yeah. Thank so, you. Um, We've got longevity in my circles. <laughs> so you might have answered um, Ebony's question about pre-planning. Cool. And can I just say thank you to Ebony because I'm wearing one of her pieces tonight. Ooh, that's, wow, and so am I. Ah, nice one. Yes. Thanks, Ebony. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Jemmy, my queen. Jemmy knows which picture is it is, she said. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I'm wearing bright, blue, bright pink and a Mexican hat. So, yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Zina, I just wanted to say, guys, I'd just like to apologise. I am having some technical difficulties this evening. No apology. Well aware, so I'm going to, you know, so, but, I, but what I wanted to ask you, Zina, and it is kind of um, moving on a little bit, and it was to talk about the mother of a bum. Um, okay. And... I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about what that's all about. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh. What you're doing. Oh, yeah. I think your, your connection's going on. Yeah. Just for. Marcy, we can't hear you. I think I get the gist of the question. Yes. About mother right. of abundance. Yeah, <laughs> about mother of abundance and um and how that, that started and what, what it's about. I can I can say um one of the biggest thing that has come for me out of working in the funeral profession is um, the need. Oh, we can't hear you very well, Marcia. I'm so sorry. I'm going to mute her. I'm going to try and mute her. Um, Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, one of the biggest thing that has come from working in the funeral profession, oh, she's gone, was... Um, was my determination to really live a fulfilling life a life with no regrets and I became really really passionate about this and wanted to inspire other people in a way that is uplifting and not scary um so I didn't want to start shouting you know ringing a bell and start going through the town saying the end of the world is nigh you know (laughs) Maybe best of life now because tomorrow is promised to nobody. Mm. I didn't want to do it in that way. I wanted to do it in a more uplifting way um, that would help people and inspire people. And I wasn't really sure how I was going to do that. I went and saw uh, a few marketing people and branding people, and they were talking about being called the inspirational funeral director. And that really didn't sit right with me at all. So I parked it for a while. And then I was like, well, if I'm going to work with a section of society, then I would probably choose ambitious mothers. Mm-hmm. And, and even at the time, I wasn't entirely sure why. I know that that isn't an, uh, an authentic place that I can speak from because I've always been fairly ambitious. Well, except when I was at school where I just rocked up to socialize. (laughs) Uh, Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) 
which I later came to regret, I have to add. It just slowed, it just set me back, you know, so many years. If I was switched on at school, I could have fast tracked my ambitions, but wasn't clued up enough to that at the time. But yeah, I was ambitious, more so when I left school, strangely, and even more so when I realized that I was expecting my first child. And I was like, I have got to sort stuff out. I have not got a good enough education. So it's like, man, I got to go back to that. Um, just getting basic qualifications sorted, which would have, I'd have been so much more ahead if I didn't have to redo those things. We say nothing before it's time. Yeah. However, I recommend to young people coming up, oh, do your qualifications when you're in an educational environment where you've got your teachers on hand to help you, where you've got your books there already. You don't have to dip your hand in your pocket and buy them yourself. You're already in an, in, in an educational setting. Do your best there and continue to do your best. Work hard, play hard. I love that motto. So yeah, my, my, my ambition went into overdrive when I realised that I was pregnant with my son and it's like I've got to sort stuff out and I have been uh, an ambitious mother as a single parent I have been an ambitious mother as un uneducated I have been an ambitious mother student I have been an ambitious mother working her way at the bottom of her career I have been an ambitious mother in um, a, a marriage and then a failed marriage and a divorced ambitious mother I have had really terrible relationships and now I'm happily married in a wonderful relationship. And all of those iterations of being an ambitious mother, I believe I have something to bring to others to help them on that journey, either from a coaching space or a mentoring space. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how Mother of Abundance came about. Nice. My eldest son got quite ill and I helped him through a serious illness and he sort of I, part of that recuperation I'd gotten him a doctor and I've also gotten him a, a coach as well life coach and we had long conversations and he said to me you know you you make a really good coach you'd make a really good coach and I was like I don't really know about that man I don't really know about that then I asked Karen and Marcia about coaching qualifications and Karen recommended um, that I go away on a coaching weekend, which I did. And I was absolutely blown away, absolutely blown away. And what I like about coaching is <laughs> differently to um, working in a funeral profession is no one needs to have died. <laughs> no one needs to have died in order to have these huge, massive, life-changing transformations. And, and that is really important to me that yes, I can definitely support people where they, when they're at their lowest ebb and they need that kind of deep emotional support, but mm -hmm. I can now help them as well when no one's died and no one needs to be ill. It mm -hmm. can just be literally like a peacetime solution to their problems or um, uh, uh, putting them on a stronger footing you know, whilst they're not in a crisis. So yeah, I really love it. I love, I really, really love Mother of Abundance. I love coaching. Fantastic. It's just wonderful, yeah. Fantastic. So we've got another question for you, um, Zena. So you're running the funeral parlor, you're doing your masters, you've got Mother of Abundance, <laughs> you chair two charities. So you've not really got that much to do. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, asked, how do you wind down? Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, this is when? What do you do? Right. So there's a few things that I do. Friday family film night that I do not do anything on a Friday. No appointments on Friday nights. That's for me. I'm a little pudge. Elijah is my youngest son and his full title is Pudge. Pudgelicious, Pudgely the first. <laughs> <laughs> we choose our films together. We get takeaway. Peter used to do basketball on Friday evening. So it used to be mainly me and Pudge together. And sometimes my eldest son 
um, Malachi might come down and watch a film with us, especially when we were doing the whole Marvel season and we like watching all the Marvel films. Um, but Peter, has, since since the pandemic, he's he's no longer doing coaching anymore. After 20 years, he's no longer doing it anymore. So he'll come and join us. It's part of like a family tradition on the way home. Um, Peter will get pudging himself some chips. I'll get an Indian takeaway or whatever takeaway t- tickles my fancy. Um, I might have some wine. But Friday nights are ours. Oh. Um, I, I try not to work on weekends. Um, I like to be able to fall asleep on the couch and not miss an appointment. So I don't really do that anymore. And I've had to put my foot down with one of my charities. We were like, well, you know, let's do this on Sundays. I'm like, I don't work on Sundays. And they're like, but we're all being flexible and saying, yeah, I have, I have things to do on Sundays. So I need my day of rest. And my, my thing is I'm, I'm in a leadership role, right? So without being arrogant, I'm in charge. So there's no point in me pretending I'm not. Um, let's get real here keep it real if I'm in charge then there's ways that I can positively influence the way things are done burnout is not an option I'm not doing that and whoever wants to as my grandma would say burst me down they're not going to be the ones who are going to come and visit me in hospital so it's best that I you know make sure that I stay healthy for me and stay healthy for the people who would come and see me in hospital and that, those are the people who chill out with me Friday Family Film Night, whose ear I bend over the weekend, which includes Karen and Marcia. <clears throat> I'm part of a, a wonderful mastermind group. It's just amazing. I, and b- because I'm a, a, a business person, I am not new to mastermind groups. Mastermind groups are not a, a, a new concept to me. Um, people who are from either diverse or similar businesses get together and they'll really thrash out what they want to do, how they want to grow their businesses. There's a lot of personal development involved. Um, I will say I will not work at a weekend. The exception is the mastermind Queens and that's me and Marcia and Karen and our beautiful friend, Jamie as well. We will rock up with our glasses of wine Sunday evenings (laughs) and it's just pure joke. The thing about it is, we get so much done and Ebony I have to say that even though we do talk about business our getting together on a Sunday evenings is a very important part of my downtime um we we say we're we're able to speak our truths we we have no professional hats on you know, the gloves are off. We're not fighting, but the gloves are off and it's just us. We're literally bearing our souls in a really, really safe space. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's phenomenal. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal and so positive. We are the polar opposite of the bucket of crabs. We <laughs> raise one another up all the time all the time we're raising each other up and it's like whenever we get awards because we, we're like award winners in the group whenever we um do something great whether it's big or small it's like well done I took my son to safari park and I got a congratulations because them not know me going outside my yard is a big deal <laughs> we're like we need to see pictures we need to see pictures <laughs> it is so that's one of my my uh, one of the things and actually take it going to mill hill chapel it's a it's a non-denominational church so anybody from any religion any denomination of christianity muslims jewish people um hindu sikhs whatever you want to call yourself even if you have no faith everyone wants you nice you're welcome Mm-hmm. And that for me is really important. And there's a meditative um, service that takes place on Wednesdays in addition to the Sunday service too. So I, if, if there's been anything that's been particularly stressful or distressing, um, I, can, I can, you know, debrief myself either by talking to Peter, who's just literally so appropriately named because he is my rock or church or the mastermind queens, Watching comedies, really important. Comedies, man. 
they're just the bread they're just the best yeah. so yeah i take downtime very seriously i will lie in if i'm tired i will and i won't feel no way about it yesterday i didn't get i didn't get changed out of my nighty i don't feel any way about it <laughs> <laughs> So that's, I hope that answers the question. Yes, we have. Thank you for that. And um, I will just confirm as well what Zena said about our team, our mastermind <laughs> queens. It is the most beautiful group. I would, well, nobody can replicate what we've got, but you can try and have a go with you, with this, with your sisters and your friends. Um, but it is, it's just uplifting and funny. Absolutely, it's really yeah. funny. We have the most amazing time, don't we? Except <laughs> Karen, who's depressing, always miserable. I ain't Karen. <laughs> we have another question for you. Another question for you. RJC Dance would like to hear a little bit more about your masters, please. Okay, um, so that is a master's, it's it's a master's level qualification. So it's an ILM level seven diploma and the equivalent of that is a master's and it's in executive coaching and mentoring wow. uh, it's quite intense it's, it's quite intense <laughs> yeah. it, it has been yeah. pressured at times but um I think there was a, a huge hurdle that I had to get over and I've gotten over that now and I'm working quite well through it I did put it on the back burner when I was homeschooling Elijah um through the first lockdown but I'm, I'm back into it now and it's really helping me in the way that I coach people and the way that I coach myself as well and and deal with balance uh, but it's good having the theory I, I like how I'm a nerd I'm a real nerd if I'm going to do something then I'll get a course in it even if I'm doing sketch noting or something, I'll do an art course because like, oh, this is quite good. Could it look better? I'll go and get a course. And that is me. I'm I'm very, very much a nerd. Yeah. That's all right. She's, she's being really honest about it. Can I just... Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Go ahead, Karen. No, go, go on. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if you've got any more questions, but I'll bef I just wanted to... You go ahead with the questions and now. It wasn't a question. It was just some comments... Um... Nicola Sterling is saying, yeah, nice and relaxed environment, keeping it real, really important. And Ebony said that sisterhood is so important. And I think, um, yeah, beautiful is really the only Absolutely. word to describe what we have. Uh, nothing's off the agenda. There's no criticism. There's no judgment. There's no jealousy. There's just a lot of love. And um, we will keep each other accountable and we will we challenge do. each other. And we, we will ask questions. Yes, we do. Um, but it's yeah. always from a place of love, always. And that, that gives confidence, doesn't it? Because, you yeah. know, when you've been asked a question, that can be perceived as being, oh, well, where's that come for? She's going on like that for. Yeah. I, I have been asked, you know, tough questions in the past in the MQs group. And I never, I have never, ever been offended. Never. And I think that's because there's such implicit trust. Yeah. And that mm. and that's been tested, you know, I think. We've yeah. not pushed buttons or anything, but I think it's the way that we share. It's so obvious that we trust each other. The personal, very personal things that we've talked about makes it clear that we are safe to talk to one another. And I, I don't hang around with yes people anyway. I have found that I was married to a yes man and that ended terribly. Um, <laughs> with me being blamed with all the thing, for all the things he was agreeing with. Um, no, I need people around me who are not afraid to say no, or they're not afraid to say, you sure you're doing the right thing there? And if I say, well, yeah, I am, then they're still not afraid to say, why do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Why do you think you're doing the right thing? Or I'm a bit concerned that that might not work out the way you think it might. Can it work out different ways to the way you're thinking? And we, we're quite strong personalities, I think. Marcy tries to go on that she's sweet and cute. And so does Jamie. Right? Jamie goes on that she's shy. Right? Yeah. I don't even pretend. <laughs> what you see. That's what you we will we, quite um we'll we'll we will sort of raise each other up with strength and compassion yeah 
No, that's really nice. And that's how it's meant to be. You know, that's how we're meant to be doing, bringing each other up, lifting each other up, it and is. being there to support each other. You know, that's that's what it's about. So that's that's really nice, that. Our JC yeah. Dance Again says, um, investment, respect, support, and congruence within any group or sisterhood is so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Jenny yeah. would like to confirm that she actually is quite shy. <laughs> Yeah, Jamie. Part two from Jamie. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh, she's hilarious. <laughs> um, I don't know how much we've got. I don't know if I can. You know, perfect day, uh, Zena. Do you talk about that publicly, or I do. I do talk about it publicly. Um, it's actually something that came out of conversations with. Jamie and Marcia and Karen and my Facebook group as well. I asked ambitious mothers what their challenges were um, and what they needed. And out of that, um, I created a, a, a workbook and it's free. And I think it will always be free. And you can get that from motherofabundance.com. It's, it's, I try to make it as accessible as possible all over the website. There are links to how you can get that. And it literally is a workbook to help you work out not only what your perfect day is, but how to implement aspects of your perfect day every single day day so that before you know it you've, you're living your best life and it's it's I suppose it, it it combines a few things like um brainstorming what you really like and what you enjoy and you, it gives the person the headspace and the room to actually think about themselves yeah. in a positive way um and also to think about well yeah how can I get these things more in my life and what does having a perfect life look like well it starts with imagining what it might look like and being asked the question what would that look like you know we're not asked these questions at school but I have had tremendous feedback from um, the people who have done the workbook and who look at it a lot of people go back to the perfect their perfect day um workbook the, the actual name of, of it is um planning your best life and living it every day and that's exactly what it's about and people reflect on it and go back to it and sometimes in the don't know where they're going in their lives they will go back to their workbook and it and it it, it works as a as a really profound source of of inspiration and encouragement for them because it comes from their heart well, I love that you've got to go Marcia yeah unfortunately okay. yeah. thank you so much because I want to yeah I do need to go unfortunately but um just to also say before I go Zine, you are such Aww. a beautiful soul and I want to also say remember to talk about your podcast I wanted to talk to you about that as well yes, so that's just I know. yeah please <laughs> let <laughs> me know about that all right, I'm gonna go everyone. Bye, right. so, yeah. okay. Bye, sis. See you later. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 <laughs> Um, this show is not scripted, guys. We have no clue. Um, no. <laughs> we um, just on the, the perfect day thing, one, one of the things I, I loved um, and what Zena did, you know, we talk about that we are a great sisterhood, but we're also very productive and we're also very business orientated, all of us. You know, Zena got us together on a proper business planning day to sit down and work. We, she was serious as well. I'm like, she planned the time, the venue. I'm like, oh my Lord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we went through our perfect day and what that would look like and I refer to mine very very regularly and what Zena would say to me which I always remember is you know when you do your to-do list or I've got to do this and I've got to do that da, da. she was like bring joy into it okay I want my house to look like this and I want my office in the garden and Michael's recording studio in the garden and I want us to have a chef coming in and cooking us meals you know three times a week beautiful things in my perfect day um and it's just a real life document that just makes me, I read it and I'm just oh. uplifted. It's an, an amazing exercise to do. Yeah. Anyway, so Zena, podcasting queen, let's hear about your podcasts. Yeah. Just another thing she does. 
Okay, so um, I I did mention that I am a nerd and I have different ways of taking in information and podcasts. I am a consumer of podcasts, really love them, but I wanted to I wanted to expand my reach for Mother of Abundance and help with coaching aspects of Mother of Abundance. And I just thought, well, I know I love podcasting and it's so convenient listening to them when I if, if I'm tackling the laundry pile or taking Elijah to school or whatever I'm doing it's really handy having that audible way of taking in information and so I decided to launch the podcast and I have to say I was inspired by Marcia because um, we know Marcia has a podcast and was talking about that and no matter what she was doing in her life she was still making huge progress yeah, yeah. with this podcast, which I was completely amazed by. And I was like, kind of got no excuse, man. I got to get this sorted. So yeah, um, I've I, the, this the podcast has been quite successful recently. It um, it's turned over seven hundred and fifty downloads. Wow. It's been going since July. Um, I've had great feedback on the podcast. I have been invited to go onto other people's podcasts, which has been fantastic, a really good experience for me. And and it's it's nice being able to look at my audience, uh, you know, be speak literally verbally speaking yeah. Yeah. to my audience and being myself yeah. and, and and not necessarily having to look all that hot while I'm doing it. I can just be podcasting no makeup, hair not done, all the rest of it. And I, f I find that is a really convenient medium for me, more so than doing YouTube. I, I, I was going to do YouTube a few years ago and I tried it and I'm like, I'm a tomboy, man. I want to only put makeup on when I'm playing. Not yeah. like all the time, you know? <laughs> only when I'm playing dress up, not like <laughs> every single day. So yeah, podcasting for me is is it's a really useful medium and I enjoy it. And it's fortunately, thank God, it's been well received too. Yeah. Oh no, that's sure. really good. I mean, that's excellent. So what have you got planned for yourself in the next five years? Where do you want to see yourself? Okay, so... Um, You'll be I'm... 65. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'll be 53 in five years time. I'm 48 at the moment a baby yeah and you know what as far as I'm concerned I've not left being 19 I'm always going to be a teenager and that is part of the way I behave and I know Karen you're always a teenager too no two yeah. ways about it yeah, yeah. and I love that and, and I know that the, um, the young people you take care of love it too they can tell and um, for me I am launching um your best life and legacy academy that is launching in um January uh, on the 25th of January and I'm really excited about that uh, that will build on your perfect day and it will help ambitious mothers to <clears throat> not only identify their perfect day do habit um, changing um, aspects I'll be coaching people through mental blocks all of that kind of stuff, but it will also be a manual that they'll be able to refer to for themselves, but it will be a living document so they can change it. In addition to that, it will be a legacy document for their children. So that will inform their children what really makes their mum tick, wow. the things that they have struggled with, how they've worked through those struggles and challenges, what they have done, what they wish they'd done better, how they would change those things. It will have information in about the things that their mother loves the most, yeah. you know, their favorite things, because that will help inform the mother's perfect day anyway. That's part of the process. But what what the Academy will have in addition to the, the free booklet that people can access for, for, for the foreseeable future, is the coaching aspect of how to work through those those mental blocks that they might have they'll have me effectively they'll they'll have me throughout the course of, they'll have access to me through um facebook lives um q a sessions and and things like that so i'm really looking forward to that 
I have a couple of life ambitions. I've already taken my family to Barbados where my, my, my father was from. I still want to take my family to Jamaica where my mum's from. And I want, I want my descendants to know those islands, see those islands because otherwise there's, there's no guarantee they'll make that journey a priority. <clears throat> so it's, it's part of my, I feel my responsibility and, and this is not a judgment on anybody else who doesn't mm -hmm. prioritize that. It's just personally to me, yeah. I feel it's a pri priority for them to know where their ancestors were from. You know, we know they come from Africa, but via yeah. um, those islands. And I really want them to do that. That was planned for next year. Don't know if that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, things have changed considerably since Absolutely. that was part of my plan. For my 50th year, I want to take my family to the Maldives to celebrate out there. And I still got to get, I've, I've got my dream home right now. And that's, that is a priority, but I don't have my dream house. Okay. okay. Which is different. different. Yeah, definitely. So I, but within the next five years, I would like to have my dream house. It may be in the UK. It might not be. Um, but I, I, I know that I, I don't want to be old here. Even, even if I live like a migratory sort of life where I'm here when it's warm and I'm somewhere warmer when it's not. <laughs> yeah. You that's know what? Plan. That's so weird because today when I was out, I was out on my bike and walking and anyway. Nice. And these were, these were the things that I was thinking about, you know, it's like, oh yeah, let me work it out. So if I came back here this time when it's warm here and wet there, yeah. but yeah, so these are the, yeah, definitely. I am with you on that. Yeah. And the thing about it, I gave myself a five year plan and I think I've got, well, I counted down, I've got like 20 months left at uni. And so I'm like thinking, Les, you really need to get your act into gear. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, like wow you don't realize do you how quickly time goes by no, no. yeah so true yeah but i'm i gave myself a five-year plan and it's like yeah you don't yeah i really need to start going and i think it's really good to have that because it's something for you to focus on where you see yourself and what you want to do mm -hmm. and even if that plan changes yeah that's fine as well mm -hmm. you know because you might be in a different place but i think it's nice to have that plan i agree yeah. I agree. The, the workbook is a five year plan. That free workbook effectively is a is a five year plan. Yeah. And um, the academy is going to build on that and make it almost like a memoir, a personal development memoir. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I think, as you've said, it is important to be able to look at your goals five years down and then be able to reverse engineer how mm -hmm. you're going to get that. But in a way that isn't scary. It's like, oh my God, I ain't got a crystal ball. How am I supposed to know I'm going to do it? You know, just <laughs> in a safe way, reverse engineer it so that it happens. It's important. Yeah. It's really no, important. It's important as we get older. I mean, in a couple of years' time, I'll be 60 years old. And I'm thinking, I've got a lot to do before. So yeah. me and Olivia have decided she needs to be a certain age before I die. So we're planning on 87. So I've got another 30 years to go. 30, you know, 29 years minimum, to go. So minimum, yeah. And yeah. we have to plan about your life just yeah. it just slips Absolutely. by, doesn't it, yeah. before, before yeah. you realise it. Yeah. Um, Ebony says we are all ageless teenagers. She's absolutely right. Yes! <laughs> I'm, I'm up for that, Ebony. I love <laughs> that. <laughs> From the conversation I've been having with Zena about um, the academy that she's starting, it's, it, it encouraged me to have a conversation with Olivia about, Olivia, would you, how would you feel about me leaving a, a, writing a book for you? She goes, Mum, I'd love it. I'm like, would you really? She goes, oh, yeah. And I'm like, what would you like in it? Happy stuff, sad stuff? And she's, she's like, um, oh, happy stuff. I really want to hear all the happy stuff. And then she went, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of sad stuff, but I'd, I'd love it if you left me a book. Wow, and, that's that's interesting. And, isn't it? Isn't it? and, and Zena knows my mum has left her children a book. She's left us all a book. Um, and it is like the most, the most beautiful thing. And every time I read it, I learn something new about my mum. It's really mm. weird. I love that. It, it's the most beautiful beautiful thing that is like love it. Knows to me yeah yeah Karen knows that is my inspiration and I did mention in the beginning of this conversation that the most important part of a funeral to me is the the eulogy and it was at Karen's mother's funeral that I heard that she'd written these books one for each of her children she only had six published they were not for sale they were just for her children. And I was absolutely blown away by that. 
absolutely blown away and I have to say that God rest Mrs Martin she has schooled me from beyond the grave I never met her in life but yeah. she's impacted on she's really impacted on me and I and I will say with no shame no pride no ego whatsoever Mrs Martin is definitely the inspiration behind um, having a book as a legacy as part of my academy I've never forgotten that she's done that I've I've brought it up in conversations with with Karen tons of times since that the, the funeral and like wow your mum really did that wow your mum really did that wow your mum really did that it's like, <laughs> it's a big deal. like I've never known anyone to do that I mean who does that who does that it's just so big it's so big and the more I've been speaking to the ambitious mothers they're like I didn't realize that that is something that I would really want or love to have but it's definitely something I would want or love to have for my children if not for myself you know so that I can refer back to I'm feeling really rubbish today how do I deal with this well let me just have a look at my book on my, my, my bedside table mm -hmm. and do what I what I do to pep myself up you know but having that as a sort of um, personal development manual for your children yeah no that's really nice that's really priceless. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that is that is really nice. That is something Thank you. to really think about actually. I'm gonna oh, definitely nice. take that away and think about that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. But you know what, ladies? Where's the time gone? Because <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, it's quarter past six. And you, can you guess what was on today? Are you any of you two? Do you like racing? Do you like, do you, like do you follow Lewis Hamp Formula One? Oh my goodness, Lewis Hamilton! I love him, and he's it used, it's usually on at six thirty till eight thirty. Okay. So and today, listen, listen. Oh. Today, I went to go and set it and everything, and I saw it was on at four o'clock. I'm like, what? I nearly cancelled this. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> Naughty. So I just had to like close it, but no, I mean, I can't believe how quickly the time has gone. Yeah, it's flown by. What a past six. And what, what comments have we got? Any more comments? Does everybody like our name? Has anybody said anything about it? Um, we've been getting some loves and likes and all sorts of things. Um, but I think I've read out all the main You know, comments. how. All right. How do people get in touch with you then? You know, you know, like um, if they wanted to set up um, a plan, a funeral, you know, how would they, how would they get in touch with yourself? So there's a couple of ways, actually. Um, there's a few ways. So um, we're really fortunate in that our Facebook for Gooding Funeral Services is really, it's just thriving it's thriving it's very very popular considering the subject matter yeah. we have engagement on there that is like through the roof and god bless gay because she manages that um <clears throat> so people could message us there they could also go to goodingfuneralservices.co.uk and they could message us us on the contacts page there too we are um contactable on twitter i think it's gooding funeral services um on twitter we've got an instagram page but mainly i think it's fair to say that facebook people speak to us regularly yeah. and engage with us regularly on facebook and there's loads of information on our website we've tried to make it as comprehensive as possible because we we recognize that when someone's bereft literally their head goes losing somebody of you know profound importance to a person yeah. it's distracting to say the least it's yeah. really really distracting so we don't expect them to keep all the information in their heads we will say don't worry you don't need to memorize all of this take your notes if you're taking notes but it's all on the website yeah. and and that's true to form we've got information on the covid rules there We've got what to do when someone dies and we've got to do, uh, we've got information on planning funerals. We've, we've, we've tried to make it as 
as comprehensive as, as possible so that it's not, not tricky for someone to just find out what they need to know. Brilliant. With regards to Mother of Abundance, there's motherofabundance.com for um, and, and at the top right hand side of the, the page, there's links to my Twitter feed, to my Instagram feed. Um, I am quite active on LinkedIn as well, individually. You can find me there as Zena Gooding Broderick. And what I do say to people is I'm very well connected. And I think that's pointless unless you use those connections to help other people. Absolutely. Um, so if you, if you connect with me on LinkedIn and you see anybody in my friendships and my connections that you would like to be connected to, I'm happy to help. Because otherwise, I just think they're just there gathering, growing numbers, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, but if you need any help like that, I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to assist. It's just, I just think the way to go is to help one another. A high tide rises all boats. Nice. And, and, and I really believe in that. I really, really believe in that. My success comes from helping others become successful. And there's no ego in that. It's just a fact. Yeah. It's just a fact. So any way that I can help people, always happy to help. No, She's amazing at helping people. No, There's absolutely, absolutely no doubt about it. And Thank I'm just you. privileged that you've come into my life. I wish my mum knew you actually. She'd love you. Oh, she would. She doctors, but she would love you. Oh, thank you. I feel right cute now. <laughs> Uh, RJC dance say that Lewis Hamilton is a truly amazing record-breaking sportsman. So yes. there you go, you've got a bit of company there, um, Leslie. And uh, Lady Fee Mac, uh, Fiona, says your hair looks beautiful. Um, she loves your hair, Zena. Yeah. So, oh, thank you. Um, and Madge Bell says, fabulous chat today, ladies. Really enjoyed it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. It's been really interesting. Yeah. It has. It has. So what's happening next week? We're not back next week, are we? We're not here. We're not back next week, but we are the week after, and that's going to be another interesting Absolutely. conversation. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So free week next week, and then we're back on the 29th of November. I'll be watching. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you, so beautiful this. sister. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, oh, no, you're welcome. It's been brilliant. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on. It's been lovely. And thank you, everybody, our beautiful audience who keeps tuning in every week. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thank we you so much. We love you and we love your comments. Your comments make the, make the conversation as well. Absolutely. So. Yes. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. See you all in two weeks. Yay. Bye. Bye.